This leads me to the second aspect. Work with what you know and understand how to learn the rest. If you're anything like me, you spend uh, much of your first and second years here, uh, assuming that somewhere along the way this would all start to make sense. Uh, you know, 3Ls for the most part seemed to have a solid grasp on what they were doing, and surely there must be some point where I could drop my constant look of confusion. It wasn't until I was a 3L myself that I realized that it wasn't that 3Ls had all the answers. It was just that we were too tired to care. After two years of stress and anxiety, we had become used to the fact that things tend to go right over our head. All the anxiety of feeling like I was the only one who had no idea what was going on melted away, but I started to wonder why no one was really talking about it. You know, those of us who self-select as law school applicants tend to be a pretty competitive bunch by nature, and I think the law school only heightens this tendency. Indeed, I often find myself racing cars on the freeway even though the other person has no idea that they're in a competition. <laughs> and when I outpace the car in the next lane, next, you know, I feel the glow of pride and I think, that's right, better luck next time, Mr. Light Blue PT Cruiser. <laughs> and we even invent contests amongst ourselves. In our first year, it was nothing more complicated than working the word of the day into an answer given in class. Words like gloss, or quibble, or Nordic track. After a while, we start upping the ante. This year, I won a free lunch by working the lyrics to Bed Midler's The Wind Beneath My Wings into a class discussion. And to think, we attend USD Law, where the atmosphere is much friendlier and the learning process is much more collaborative than in most places. I mean, just imagine how insufferable we would all be if we went to Hastings. <laughs> As competitive people, I find that we are reluctant to admit when we don't have the answers. We feel that it makes us somehow incompetent or unsuccessful. Being knowledgeable, however, does not mean having all the answers. It means knowing where to go for the answers when you need them. It means understanding our own limitations so that we can confront what we do not know and seek out information quickly. Understanding and being comfortable with not having all the answers is essential because from now on our careers we'll focus on preparing for and handling the unforeseen and the unexpected. After all, it's highly unlikely that a client is going to walk into your office and say that he was in pursuit of a fox when another guy killed it and he'd like to know who owns it. <laughs> This leads me to the third aspect. Excuse me a second. <laughs> Thinking responsibly. If flying by the seat of your pants sounds like a danger to others, it's probably because it seems inherently irresponsible. It conjures images of individuals simply making things up and skipping town, the type of behavior we associate with shady individuals like uh, Bernie Madoff or some lighthouse keeper on Scooby-Doo. This is simply not the case, however, because flying by the seat of your pants still requires that each of us be responsible enough to hold ourselves accountable to those who depend and trust upon what we say. Now, depending upon and trusting what we say, that's, that's a new concept for many of us. When I was in high school, my parents wouldn't tell me ahead of time if they were leaving town. I'd come home to a note that said, Jacob, because my mom actually gets to call me Jacob, we'll be back next week, there's chicken and rice in the fridge, love mom. I often think this was because my parents overestimated the amount of time it took to plan a keg party. <laughs> but regardless, in spite of the passage of time and my many pleas, my parents still don't tell me about their travel plans. And the reason that I bring this up is that I'd like to point out that the, for the people who've known me the longest, they still don't listen to anything that I say. But those who know us in a professional capacity will see us differently. And this can be both exhilarating and terrifying. Though some of us have already entered it, there can be no doubt that from here on out, each of us is entering a level of responsibility in which the well-being of others depends on how hard we work and how dedicated we are. Not every worker carries such a responsibility. My barista at Starbucks can lie to me and say that the maple sausage scone is indeed quite tasty. What does he care? So not everyone has this burden, but at the end of the day, we get to say that our job is to help others, that we are there for people when something profound has occurred, and that our talents make us uniquely situated to change this world for the better. And I do not think that any of us would have come this far if we didn't think that that was more than a worthy trade-off. So the fourth aspect, understand who's there to catch you. And I have absolutely nothing unique at all to say about this. Uh, you know, I, I listed it because I want to be able to say that my list is comprehensive. But, uh, and also as a reminder that you should thank your significant others because you've been kind of a pain over the past three years. But in the interest of time, I'm going to cut this one short and skip to the last requirement which is that you endure. Flying by the seat of your pants is going to be difficult and often anxiety causing. As I stated earlier, we are graduating into tough economic times. There's no denying our circumstances. We are that class that is spoken of in hushed tones. Like the class that graduated in the early 90s recession or the dot-com bus graduates, we have become the subject of cautionary tales of New York Times headlines describing non-existent job markets. However, the skills we have learned here have made us optimally prepared for the uncertainties ahead. We have worked long hours, 
we have studied hard, and we've learned to get through difficult situations with grace. In many ways, at this moment, we have become the best of ourselves. And just as we are a cautionary tale now, so are we legends in the making, because legends are never born of easy circumstance. Legends succeed where prognosticators believe they will fail. Legends find a way where there appears to be none. And for you, and for all of us, I hope that you fly by the seat of your pants and find the sort of success that will be legendary. On a final note, I just want to say that I'm going to miss so very many of you. Most of all, I'm going to miss this feeling, never stronger than today, that we were all in something together. These have been rough days, the all-or-nothing kind of days. They were the opposite of Frank Sinatra's days of wine and roses, but all the same, I'm going to miss these days of beer and outlines and you. Thank you very much.